Hello and welcome everyone to today's cloud coaching session on Unleashing Possibilities with PL SQL SDK. Thank you for joining us. My name is Tara Van Cleve and I am a marketing event manager for the developer initiative here at Oracle. Today we're excited to dive in with an overview of the PL SQL SDK and have authentication works to walk through code comparison of Python SDK program and the equivalent PL SQL SDK script, and finally demo practical use cases for the PL SQL SDK. We'll also be recording the session and you'll receive the recording via email at the same email that you registered with for today. If you have any questions during the webinar, please drop them in the Zoom chat and Q&A areas and we'll be ready to help answer them. We have also set up a channel in our developer public Slack called Cloud Coaching North America that you can access at the QR code here or at bit.ly slash odevrel underscore Slack. We'll leave the channel open after the event to contact us directly with any questions and to share any resources. So today's webinar will be presented by Master Principal Cloud Architects, Stephen Nichols and Derek Cameron, and Thomas Pauskill, Staff Cloud Engineer. So without further ado, I will hand it over to Stephen. Great, thank you, Tara, and welcome everyone. Today I'm gonna to walk through uh, the OCI SDKs, just a quick overview of what those are. I know a lot of you may know them already, but it's good just to remind everyone. And then also walk through the, the Oracle PLSQL SDK for OCI. Um, that's one that people may not know or are familiar with. Uh, then I'll go into a little more deep dive into the PLSQL SDK for OCI. I'll talk about the credentials required uh, to interact with OCI. I'll also talk about the grants needed in order to run those PLSQL scripts. Uh, and then for those that are familiar with other SDKs, Python specifically, I'll walk through a simple program in Python that uh, will demonstrate how to interact with OCI. And then I'll walk through the equivalent in PLSQL just to show uh, the parity or, or the relationship between the two and how you can essentially do the same in each one. And then lastly, I'll hand it back over to Tom and Tom will give us a quick overview of the Code Innovate program. So just as a reminder, uh, OCI, Oracle Cloud Infrastructure, has several SDKs available to, to build and develop applications that interact with, with Oracle Cloud Infrastructure. Uh, those would include Java, Python, uh, TypeScript, uh, .NET, Go, and Ruby. And we can't mention SDKs without mentioning the command line interface, the CLI. Uh, that goes hand in hand a lot of times with, with, with the Python SDK. You can use authentication or leverage the authentication setup for the OCI CLI in the Python SDK. Uh, so I just wanted to quickly mention that those are available. Uh, but today we're mainly going to focus on the PLSQL SDK for OCI. Um, like, like all the other SDKs, it allows you to write code that interacts and manages resources in the OCI world. Um, any autonomous database that's spun up in shared infrastructure, so any ADB and shared infrastructure, whether ADW or ATP, automatically has the PLSQL SDK pre-installed in there. Um, and then lastly, in order to interact with the SDK, uh, you're gonna need an Oracle Cloud account or a tenancy. Uh, some call it a tenancy or an account. Uh, you'll need a, a, an OCI user created in that tenancy uh, with the correct policies. Uh, you'll see in a few minutes, you'll also need a public-private key pair for the uh, signing of API requests. And, and that format is in a PEM format, PEM format. And then lastly, if you're gonna be working in PLSQL, you'll need an ADB uh, shared instance. Uh, whether that's ADW or ATP. Now, when you're when you're interacting with with OCI through the SDKs, uh, if you've done anything with Python, you'll see that uh, there's the uh, API signing keys that you set up, and, and I'll walk through this in a few minutes in the Python script. Uh, 
But also for PLSQL, you also need to authenticate from the database in PLSQL back to the OCI or cloud infrastructure environments. And that's done very similarly to how you do it in, in the Python SDK. Um, a lot of people have probably used the DMS Cloud Create Credential before. Um, and I'll walk through the documentation here in a moment. Uh, a lot of people have used the DMS Cloud Create Credential just to interact with, with object storage where you have a, a user, an OCI user and an auth to token. This credential is a little bit different. It's going to include uh, the user that is an OCI, your tenancy, uh, the private PEM key, which allows you to do the API signing uh, when you make the request, and then the fingerprint. And along with uh, the credentials, which allows PLSQL scripts to interact with OCI, uh, there's also the actual DMMS cloud underscore packages and types that you'll use in your PLSQL. And in order to, to call those from a PLSQL script, uh, you'll need to grant uh, permissions or privileges to those users that are not admin users. So just to be clear, if, if you're running the PLSQL uh, from the user admin, which is set up uh, when you create an, an ATB or an ADW instance, the admin is the default user. The admin user already has access to these packages and types. Uh, but but in a lot of cases, we, you know, we see users or schemas that run PLSQL uh, outside of the admin. And so in order to, to do that, you have to grant privileges or execute privileges to those uh, packages and types uh, in your, that your script leverages in order to execute them. And I'll, I'll show you that as well. Uh, these are the grant statements that I issued for the uh, sample PLSQL script that I'm going to walk through in a couple minutes. Uh, it, the first grant grants access to the uh, DBMS Cloud OCI ID identity package. And then uh, that package is also leveraging certain types in the database. And those types are listed here. I'm not going to read them all out. And, and the schema or user that we're using today is, is webinar. So at this point, I'm going to uh, kind of walk through the documentation and then walk through the uh, Python script, a working Python script, and then compare that to what that looks like in PLSQL. Uh, but first, what I'm going to do is just point you to the documentation. So under the developer guide, uh, you'll see a lot of documentation on the SDKs. Uh, this is where you can expand out to the SDA, SDK guides, and you can see Java, Python, all the ones I listed on the slide earlier. And then uh, more importantly, if you go to the PLSQL section, which is down here, uh, this will go into more details around the PLSQL. And you know, the big notable here is these are all the services that are supported uh, in PLSQL uh, OCI SDK. So all these services that that you, you know, may use in OCI, uh, you can interact with in PLSQL. Um, and you can see there's a lot of analytics, uh, blockchain, uh, the core compute. Um, I'm gonna cover just one example under identity, uh, but you can see there's a lot of them out there. Um, and I just wanted to, to make note of that. If you expand out and look at the API reference, there's, they also provide some examples here. Uh, if you go to the API reference and you click on, you know, any one of these identity, for example, uh, you can see the the functions that are that are used for identity, and I can show you where to look at these uh, within the database too, within the autonomous database. So this is the documentation, but you can also see them. Uh, how they're defined in the database as well. But these just show the functions that are available, talks about each one, activate domain, uh, all the different things. These are the types that are available uh, for identity. You know, they kind of go through and spell them all out. And these are the ones I had to grant access to the non-admin user uh, from that slide I showed earlier. Uh, and then lastly, uh, the authentication or credentials that are required to um, actually connect to OCI from PLSQL. So if you go to DMMS Cloud Create Credential documentation, uh, a lot of people, you know, 
up until the PLSQL, I started working with it. You know, I was familiar with this credential, which is essentially creating a credential with an auth token, being able to do list objects from object storage, get objects, move objects, delete objects, write objects, whatever. Uh, I've used this one a lot. Uh, but before I got into PLSQL, I hadn't really used this credential. And this credential is, is also a DBMS Cloud create credential. But here, uh, you, you need to provide it all the values that you would provide if you were using the Python SDK, for example. Uh, you would provide the user OCID, the tenancy OCID, uh, the private key. Now, this is the actual key pasted into uh, that, that value, um, wherein the Python or OCI, CLI, it's referencing a path to a file where the key sits in. And then the fingerprint. And so this is the credential that that, that you'll leverage when executing PLSQL um, against OCI. So I just wanted to make note of that uh, before we get started. And so at this point, what I'll do is, for those who are familiar with Python, I, I thought uh, I would walk through a quick Python script that shows a, a simple example. Uh, and this example is simply uh, getting a list of all the compartments in a tenancy. Uh, I figure most people understand the concept of compartments. That's kind of the most fundamental uh, object in a compartment is, you know, how all of our services are, are organized and created and where they live are in compartments. And so I would just use a simple example of uh, get compartments and list compartments. And essentially what I'm doing is I'm creating a CSV file uh, that has uh, a parent-child relationship of the compartment when the compartment was created uh, and some other tags. If there's tags on the compartments, I go get those tags and store those as well. Um, you'll see that I'm also using a tree lib um, library to just uh, display the, li the, the make a, a visual uh, representation of the, of the compartment in the hierarchy since you can have parent childs up to, I think, six levels deep in a compartment. Uh, I was using tree live just to demonstrate that uh, hierarchy in, in a visual fashion. So essentially, the first step is to import the OCI package uh, within the Python script. And then um, I need to authenticate. And so not being able to, uh, if, you, if you can't leverage the OCI CLI config, then you can store the uh, con configuration or the authentication parameters like the user OCID, the, the tenancy and all that. And this is a sample example of what it would look like. Very similar to how you create the credential for PLSQL, uh, but this is, and also very similar, or almost the same as what you would see in OCI CLI. So these are the values that you need to populate in order to authenticate to a Python SDK. So once, once I grab those and store them, uh, essentially what I do is I need to initialize the identity client and so and what this is doing is essentially uh, using my authentication parameters i'm connecting in and uh, establishing a connection to oci and once that connection is established then what i want to do is i want to get the root compartment so i'm using the python call git compartment and i need to tenancy ocid for that and so what i want to do is i want to get the top level parent of of the compartment hierarchy, which would be the, the root compartment. Uh, so I retrieve it. Uh, I get the response data back from there. And then I store that data inside my tree node object uh, for later use. And, and then I get the, the parent child. I get the parent's ID, which would be null. I get the ID or OCID of it. I get the time it was created and so forth. I get the description of the compartment all through the Python SDK response. Uh, and now that I have the parent or the top level, then I do want to do what's called a, a identity client list compartment. And then this is going to go out and get all the compartments inside of my tenancy. And here I can def define what type of compartments I want to get. Do I want to get ones that are active only or do I want to creating inactive, deleted and so forth. And I chose to get just active ones. I want to get all levels or any level. I want to get the tree structure. You can sort that response on time created or name and how you want to sort it. 
And then once I have that JSON response of all compartments in my tenancy, I loop through that. Um, I also, if there's some tags to find, I go get the tags and um, save those off. And if the tags aren't available, then I just default to a not available. And I save that off into my node. And then I can also show that tree node uh, at the end if I want. And then lastly, I, I loop through that tree node and I actually create a CSV file, write it out to a, a CSV file, and then uh, that's it. And so that's just a simple Python script that gets the tenancy root compartment details and then all the compartments for that tenancy and saves those to a CSV file. Uh, so that's the Python equivalent. If everyone's familiar with Python or have seen that SDK before, uh, that's how you do it in Python. Um, and if I run that real quick, uh, it would look something like this. Um, it's going out, connecting. Uh, it's writing a CSV file. And then this is where the tree node comes in. You can show the tree node, and it simply shows you all the hierarchies of the compartments that are in the tenancy that you're working with. So that's Python SDK. So if you want to switch to PLSQL and see the equivalent, uh, which is what you know the purpose of this uh, Code Innovate is, or, or this webinar is, we're going to switch over to the um, database actions. So with every autonomous database that comes comes uh, that you spin up, uh, you get what's called database actions. And, and that's kind of a lightweight uh, SQL worksheet. Uh, think of if, if you use SQL Developer Web Client before, this is a lightweight version of that. Uh, not to say it's the equivalent, but it's a lightweight version which allows you to interact with, with your uh, autonomous database. And so in uh, the uh, database actions, I can um, I have some tables here. I'm logged in as a user webinar, so I'm not using an admin user. I'm using a user webinar. Um, and here, let me take a minute to show you. Uh, earlier, I showed you the documentation of where all the POSQL functions and types are, uh, but you can also see them in here. So all the POSQL functions and types for DBMS um, Cloud underscore OCI are installed and available in uh, the C dollar dollar cloud service account. And so if you go here and then you click here and scroll down to packages, uh, if you scroll down, you can see, you know, we're familiar with DBMS cloud. That's where you can do DBMS cloud, create credential or DBMS cloud list objects from object storage. But then if you start looking into the dbms underscore cloud underscore OCI, if you start seeing here, you're going to start seeing all the um, packages that are available that you can interact with OCI with. And, and so there's a lot of them, you know, and, and this will uh, coincide, you know, with, with all these uh, options that are available here that, that I showed earlier. Um, so if you if you look here, you can scroll down, and again, there's a lot of them. Um, and you find there's the OCI underscore OCI ID identity. Uh, and if you right click on that, and you say uh, open spec, here you can look at all the functions here. You know if you're if you're comfortable and want to look at them in SQL Developer Worksheet or Database Actions, or you want to look at them in SQL Developer client, um, you know, you can come here and, and look at all those and just and see, well, this is the function, and, you know, these are the types that are used, and this is the type that's returned. You know, that's the important part. What variables or values do you need to call the function and then what is returned, what type is returned? You know, and the same applies for types. So if you come down to types, and uh, it's thinking here because there's a lot of them, um, or another way uh, you can show, so it's, it seems to be thinking here. Um, another way you can do it is if you if you know what the type is, uh, you can highlight it here. If you're familiar, if you're curious with it, you can copy that. Come up here and you can search for it. And 
and you can see on it, it's right here. It's in this this uh, user schema, and then you can click on it, and it, and it should bring it up. Um, my uh, SQL Developer uh, worksheet is is not behaving well for me today, so let me refresh real quick uh, the browser. Oh, there you go. So, so bottom line is here's a type. Uh, you can open it and, and take a look at it here. And so if you want to see more details on it, you can come over to this uh, uh, cloud service account, uh, or you can search for it up here. So I'm going to switch back to my uh, webinar user. And then if I go to my um, procedures, I have uh, a very quick, the equivalent uh, POSQL script called load compartment hierarchy. And uh, what this does, and let me make my screen a little bit bigger here. So what this does is this is going to look very similar to the Python script. However, uh, it's obviously written in POSQL. Uh, so up at the top here, I have some variables or constants that I'm using. Uh, again, I need the, the uh, tenancy OCID. I need a home region of Ashburn. And then this is where the types come into play. So when I make the call, I'm going to receive the response back into uh, this POSQL type. I'm also going to take that response and then grab the body out of that. And that's in this type. Uh, and that's for Git compartment. If I'm doing list compartment, I have slightly different uh, types. And so these are defined here and here. And then the rest of these are more generic uh, types that, that I use throughout the code. So if you start looking at the code itself, um, you know, I'm just grabbing, putting out some uh, informational messages uh, to the output. So here I'm just doing a DBMS output line. Uh, and then I'm, I'm truncating the table that I'm loading into. Uh, since what I'm doing here is instead of loading to obviously a CSV file, I'm loading into a database table. And then here is a call that's going to look very similar to what I did in the Python SDK. And that's uh, here I'm going to do git compartment. And in that POSQL git compartment uh, call, I need a credential. And it's that credential that has my, my user OCID, my tenancy OCID. It has my uh, API signing key. Uh, and it has my fingerprint. So this credential is needed. I'm then passing in the tenancy OCID value in the region. And then the response uh, is where the information comes back. And then once I get that response, I want to load the response body into another variable with a different type. Uh, and then here I also spit out uh, what the status of that call is. So uh, in the API world, a 200 is a successful API call. Uh, and so I, I, I just put that out uh, to see that it was successful. Um, and then uh, I then take that first record, which is the tenancy uh, root compartment, and I load that into my uh, compartment table. Uh, and I'm grabbing the ID, the OCID, the name, the description. Um, and then if there's any tags, I'm grabbing the tags from them and, and loading them as well. Uh, and now that I got the the parent root compartment, I'm going to go through in POSQL and I'm going to do a list compartments. And this will look very similar again to the Python code. Uh, I need my credential. I need to authenticate back to the OCI. Uh, I'm going to pass in a tenancy OCID, a home region. I want all levels. Uh, my compartment ID, I want the tree itself. So I want one for true, zero will be false. I want all compartments that are active. In this case, I'm sorting by name uh, in ascending order. And again, I get the response body uh, from the response itself. Uh, here I'm listing the status code again. And then this time I'm also, with this call, I'm getting a list of uh, a compartments, just not one. So here I can I can display the, the count or number of compartments in that response using the count. Um, and then I loop through that response body uh, and then I loop through there and I grab out the OCID for the compartment, the name, the description. And then if there's any tags, 
associated with that compartment. I then grab those uh, and then I insert them into my uh, table and then I end my loop and then I throw out another timestamp just to see that um, time that it completed. So if you want to see this execute, uh, I can switch back over to the worksheet here. Uh, if I come up to example, I would just run this like I would any other POSQL. Uh, and if I show you the script output, uh, you can see that it, it just ran here, September 27th, 2023. This is the get status for my list compartment, 200 successful. Uh, you can see that I then did a list compartment to get all the rest of them, 200 successful again. This time I found 32 compartments uh, in my tenancy. And you can see this ran in pretty much under a second. So 427 is a time, 21, uh, 421 dot, you know, and so it ran about a half a second. And then, um, yeah, that's it. And then if you can switch back to the tables, you can see that uh, my compartments table it, it is loaded now. And I have OCID, I have a compartment name, I have a description, the time created. And then the parent OCID. And so I have a parent high, a parent child hierarchy table now with all the compartments in my tenancy. So at this point, the, the demo part is done. Uh, I know I went through a lot, uh, but the key takeaways are that, uh, you know, if you've done things traditionally, and, and, and I personally have done things traditionally in a Python SDK, and then loaded them into a table using the Python CX Oracle library to interact with an autonomous database. Um, you, you know, if you're interacting with OCI and you want to load stuff into an autonomous database, uh, POSQL SDK for OCI is a great fit for that. Uh, everything's within the database. Um, it executes uh, fairly well and fast, and uh, you can load directly into a table without uh, having to find a Python environment or Java or any other SDK environment to um, execute in. So I know I covered a lot, but that that was uh, pretty much it for the demo. Um, you know, for, for typical use cases, I, I don't really have anything formally planned, but in, in our use case, we wanted to be able to, uh, a customer wanted to be able to load information about their tenancy into a database so that they could then uh, put Apex on top of that and be able to, to view information Without logging into the OCI console, and so uh, they could they could create a they were able to create uh, POSQL scripts that were able to go grab all the resources from a tenancy, load those in, see who created them. They could see the status of 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 those resources. They can see if computer instances are running, if, if databases are active, and then they can monitor to see you know what's running, what's not running, and then if you want to take it a step farther. You can also, uh, you know, uh, send emails out saying, "Hey, your services are running. Uh, you might want to close them down." Or you can actually write POSQL scripts that could go through, look at all the um, services that are active or running, and then you could issue, uh, you know, shutdowns or pauses uh, to those services to say that, you know, to, to tell them to stop, and you can stop them every night. Um, so at this point, uh, that's it for my demo. Uh, thank you very much. Again, the goal was just to kind of remind people or show people that the POSQL SDK is out there. Uh, I know in the past for me personally, I have always, you know, gravitated towards Python. Uh, but but then, you know, if the use case or, or the requirements need it, POSQL is a great fit for that. Um, so at this point, I'm going to turn it over to uh, my teammate, uh, Tom and Tom's going to walk through and show Code Innovate program and what that has to, to deal with. So uh, take it away, Tom. Thank you. Awesome. Thanks, Derek. Uh, and if you have any more questions about what Derek presented, feel free to throw those in the Q and A. Um, so I get the chance to talk about um, program that 
Derek, Steve, and I all work for. Um, it's called Code Innovate. It's something that we offer here at Oracle, um, specifically within Oracle Cloud Infrastructure, um, to get customers up and running. And so when we talk about it, we like to start with a bit of an analogy. Um, so these are my manager's two kids. Um, every year they make an annual trip to Legoland. And whenever we play with Legos, I think for the most part, what we understand is getting a box of Legos and then opening up an instruction manual. It tells you step by step exactly what you're going to do. Um, and then you end up with the same Lego set that you know thousands of other people have. But actually at Legoland, they offer this course called the Master Builder course. And in the Master Builder course, they give you a random bag of um, Lego pieces with no instructions, right? And then a leader at the front known as the Master Builder walks um, all of the students through how to build something sort of more freestyle um, without following an instruction book um, and allowing you to get more creative with your solutions and Legos, right? So keep this in mind. Um, and then we'll relate that back to Code Innovate. So what is a virtual Code Innovate? Um, like most training or um, jumpstart programs, it's gonna be hands-on introduction to the cloud services. Um, we're gonna bring our engineers to the meeting in order to facilitate that rapid uh, knowledge sharing. Um, where it gets a little bit different than trainings you may have been in in the past is that we wanna take your use case, right? So you can tell us a product and say you wanna get a better overview on the product, um, like the SDKs that Steve showed today. Um, but we would go a step further and say, so what's the actual business use for this product? Um, and let's work on building that. Right? And then finally, it's a no cost program. So so long as we have enough developers um, and we're working on a proper business use case, uh, we don't charge for this. It's not like consulting or anything. All right, so again, the most important part of this whole Code Innovate experience and what really separates it from other trainings is bringing your own use cases. So we wanna know what you're trying to do um, with OCI, which products you're trying to use, and then more specifically, what you're trying to do with those products. Um, and then instead of working on a sort of pre-canned training throughout the week, what we'll do is build out on that solution. So we get the rapid knowledge share. Um, all of your engineers will be paired off with Oracle engineers. Um, these Oracle engineers will specialize sort of in the use case that you select. Um, so they're very knowledgeable. We're on with you four hours each day. Um, so you can imagine just a four hour sprint each day for five days. Um, and we're building out that use case pretty much the entire time. And then finally, you get to take home a first pass prototype. So anything that we create during the week um, you can showcase back to your leadership and say, look, we've made progress on this use case that um, we've been working on for a while. Um, and you get to take all of the code back, um, everything that you've built throughout the week. All right, so we do have some requirements for the program um, just to make it run smoothly. We like to have about four or more developers um, and then we'll pair those off um, with Oracle developers, right? Depending on how many use cases you bring to the event, um, it can always be more than one. Um, we can bring multiple specialists for multiple products, um, but those four or more developers allow it to um, make it more reasonable for us to staff. And then that 20 hour time commitment. So that's big. Um, we do like to have the developers in for those four hour sprints the whole time. Uh, we do notice a little bit distraction when they hop in and out for different calls. Um, we just like to keep consistent thought. So it's that 20 hour time commitment uh, what we typically do is the half day event. So four hours a day for five days, um, and then you're done in a week. You can bring your own use cases. Uh, we actually require that you bring your own use cases. Again, this is sort of the foundation of the program is that we're gonna do training and um, development through what you need to achieve. Three weeks lead time, that really just gives us time to block that 20 hours for our developers and probably block that 20 hours for your developers as well, right? So that gives us time to get the right engineers assigned and make sure that they can block the time necessary. And then with that, if you're interested or if you have any questions, you can post those in the Q&A, um, but I will leave this slide up and you can contact either of these um, to set up an event if you're interested. Okay. 
Well, if there are no further questions at this time, I will wrap up for the day. We just want to say thank you again so much for joining us here, and we hope to see you again next time.